Did you get a code? I did not. <laughs> it's been a very sad day. I can't say I know many people who have gotten codes. <laughs> really? What happened? That's a great question. I'm not sure. I not only personally knew 20 to 30 people who were trying to get codes, friends and family that had signed up who knew I loved her, um, but we also have sort of an online community that we've built. We put out a poll yesterday asking how many people have gotten codes. And out of 3,000 people, only 250 of them said that they had received codes. So not great odds. <laughs> oh my gosh, you must be so bummed. I mean, you are the co-founder of T-Swift Dance Party Canada. That just doesn't seem right. I'm a pretty big fan for sure. So my co-founder and I, Victoria, are definitely bummed. Um, but honestly, at the end of the day, we actually got to go down to Vegas to see her at the very beginning of her tour. So we are really lucky. I think it's more hearing from quite literally hundreds of people who slid into our DMs yesterday telling us how disappointed they were. Um, that was the hard part because they won't get to see her. So you've seen the show already. Tell us, is it worth the hype? I mean, I don't want to make people feel bad that didn't get the codes, but yes, I've actually seen, luckily, every single Taylor Swift show at the Rogers Center that she's done so far. Very sad to be missing this one. Um, but this one was just unbelievable. There's like nothing that matches being in a stadium with 70,000 people who know every single word to every single song and scream and dance to all of them like nobody's watching. It's just the most amazing energy in the world. Wow, that sounds like so much fun. Um, how have things changed then from previous Taylor Swift concerts that you were able to get a ticket to? It is wild. Like I, I'm so happy for her that her fandom has just progressed so much, but I was reflecting with some of my friends on her Reputation concert or 1989 or Red, and it was hard to get people to come with you at that point. Like I knew people who had extra tickets and they went not filling the seats because people just didn't want to come. So I don't know whether it was the release of Folklore and Evermore during the pandemic that I think a lot of people just really resonated with, um, but her, the fandom has definitely grown exponentially, that's for sure. Yeah, I've heard people say that um, through this concert, they want to make up for lost time, a uh, time that was lost during COVID. And as you uh, so eloquently explained to us, it sounds like just an electric atmosphere and so much fun. So much fun. And I mean, I, I also think we can't discount just how talented she is. Like, you probably heard people say this, but she's an athlete. Like, it was three hours and 15 minutes, and I was tired by the end just screaming myself and dancing on the spot, let alone her putting on like a theatrical performance for three hours and 15 minutes and sounding like an angel the entire time. So it, it really is, it's a spectacle. It's really impressive. Final question for you, Mary. Um, since you weren't able to get a code, would you buy a ticket if one came your way? And I'm gonna put you on the spot and ask how much you'd be willing to pay to go and see T-Swift in Toronto. Oh, that is so tough. I would say I would definitely buy a ticket. Um, I think memories of going to the Taylor Swift concerts in Toronto with my friends are honestly some of the best moments of my life. I've had the best time. If I was gonna say how much I would spend on them, depends on the ticket. Let's say nosebleeds like very back of the stadium, I would probably pay, I'd say five or six hundred dollars, maybe even to go. Is that absurd? No, um, it's what you I just want like, to do. You can't go back and change memories. You know, if this is the only time I can see eras again, then I want to see it.